is recording because I'm pretty sure no one is awake to watch this. Here we go. I'm going to go check my inboxes very quickly. Let's see. Three minutes. We got three minutes. While we wait, let's listen to a quick video. While my chair makes creaking and just random noises. So. Actually, a good a good good piece of music to play would probably be this. There we I think I need to turn it down a little bit. Joke's on you, Duke. I'm right here. Epic. Alright, glad to see that Glacier Berry made it. Also, Blondie Fox made it. Glad you guys got here. So, here's how it's gonna work. I'm going to keep my expectations low. I'm not saying that this is going to be a disappointing stream, because it's not. Because whether we get- whether I get a character I want or not, I'm gonna make this a fun stream for everybody. Alright, I'm gonna play some games on Switch, may swap over to the PS4 if I get bored, and we're gonna just play games today. We'll do an art stream later tonight, but I'm gonna focus solely on gaming. The worst case scenario, if I get really bummed, like if I get really, really bummed, like if we get Minecraft Steve or something, then I'll play some I'll play something that I just really wanna play. You know, I'll cheer myself up. And plus, I'll have the support of pretty much anybody watching the stream. So, again, if anyone wonder, if you're wondering why I'm feeling this way, plain and simple, I have not gotten a single character I wanted in the Fighters Pass. Basically, not a single one was were a character that I've I have any attachment with. So, even Banjo Kazooie, I may have a thing for platformers, but I didn't grow up with a Nintendo 64. So Banjo Kazooie's one of those that just dodged the radar for me. So we got five seconds left, so let's get this shit started. Let's get this started. Or at least let's hope to get it started. It is nine o'clock. Yep, there it is. Hello everyone, oh, I'm Masahiro shit. Sakura, director of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Let's start it quickly. We'll be using today's showcase to give you a first look at our next DLC fighter. Oh boy. Actually, Prepare your Dantes, everybody. What we'll be announcing today, even among Nintendo staff worldwide. The development team and other stakeholders have been working on this fighter with the utmost secrecy. Which means other Nintendo staff around the globe will only start making preparations for release after the showcase has been broadcast. Oh shit, this so means that <laughs> the Smash update is going to be chaos. I think even many Nintendo employees will be surprised to see this and say, wow, really? <laughs> so, let's all share in the fun of getting our hands on the latest information. Okay, who the fuck did However, you put in Smash? Who would you put in this game, boy? Who'd you put in this game? We prepared a fighter reveal video. Once it starts, I think you'll figure out who it is pretty quickly. Now, let's do this. Oh boy. Here we go.
Moment of truth. Three houses. Called it! Called it! I fucking called it! I fucking told you! I told you, motherfuckers! I told you! I told you! Yo! <laughs> Yo! I fucking told you guys! What were you thinking, charging right into the <laughs> You motherfuckers thought I was crazy. Are you? <laughs> I fucking told you. I thought as much. I also do not wish to die. And yet. Oh, you're a god. You can't die. There is no other choice. Also, Shady Attic, if you don't know my bet, I said if Byleth wasn't coming to Smash, I would get the beans ready. Smash Brothers already. What in the world are you waiting for? I fucking for? told you guys. I called it. I knew this shit would happen. I'm not even mad, okay? I actually like this game. I'm at least happy I got a character I'm attached to, so this is something. <laughs> if I never played this game, I'd be fucking bummed. I would have been so mad if I never played this game. I'm just gonna tell you now, if I never played this game, I'd be fucking mad. <laughs> so you return, and sooner than expected. I see. Too many swordsmen are there? Yeah. And you, you wield the sword as well? What will you do? Huh. So that is how you plan to win the day? So be it. I reward your cleverness this time. Yeah, just give them a strip tease. They'll stop for anything. Oh, here we go. How is this? Yep. Let's not recruit the other guys. Let's not recruit whoever the other three housemates are. What are they? Um, Sam, Beth, and Eddie? I don't know. Anyone, you should be able to handle the hero's relics. With Aaron Fox, with superior reach. Look, I'm not complaining. I'll fucking take this. Okay. Your will and mine be now at one. Plus, I like the stage choice. You're play you're fucking beating the shit out of each other in front of the church. Have you no respect? Whoever didn't see this shit coming, I fucking called it. Look. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna fish for a tweet. Yes, there you have it. Byleth from Fire Emblem Three Houses is joining the battle. Fire Emblem Three Houses was released just last summer, so it's still very new. Even so, well, no shit is still new. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. All we know is it's Fire Emblem, and Fire Emblem characters are guaranteed to make it, no matter what. This just fucking proved my point. And I bought, and I played the game. I played through it. I beat it, and I loved it. So you know, I actually have some kind of attachment with this character. First off, what is Fire Emblem? It's really uh, let's see, we're only, uh, let's see, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Okay, just we're only five games into the series at this point. It, if you, don't write you know, if we don't know what Fire Emblem is, then we probably haven't been paying attention to the character list. 
the series' first entry launched in Japan on the Famicom in 1990. You could say it was a pioneer in the genre of tactical role-playing games. You might be wondering what makes it particularly tactical. Well, it's tactical in that it simulates combat. You can think of it as moving pieces in a board game. Or in other words, a game in which you advance units across a grid in battle. When we talk about tactical games of that era, there were lots of ones in which you command tanks, aircraft, and so on. But Fire Emblem was unique because each unit was a specific character, sort of like in role-playing games. Plus, something made it stand out from other Nintendo products. Characters could permanently die. That's pretty direct language though, so perhaps we should just say they're sleeping with the fishes. But really, if a character fell in battle, you'd lose that unit. They'd be gone and you couldn't use them again. Recent entries in the series maintain this concept of permadeath to some degree in classic mode and what have you. But a lot of games now allow strategic withdrawals, so to speak. In the older games, your units would really be gone, never to be mentioned again. Scary. The game's stories are told like chronicles of war, with increasingly distinct characters and engrossing scenarios. Several characters also oh my god. I just feel like I predicted the end of the world. It's like, oh shit, I'm the guy that fucking called it. There's actually a reason for this. When I was considering how to incorporate Fire Emblem Fighters into Super Smash Bros. Melee, I thought it might be interesting to reflect the turn-based nature of the original game. First comes your opponent's game. The yeah, right now I'm still, I'm still like fishing for tweets, like... And now, Fire Emblem Three Houses is the 17th game in the series. <laughs> People who aren't Japanese in particular might be thinking, 17 games? There are that many? Well, if you include Fire Emblem Heroes in the remake... Look, I'm just saying, this is still hype, alright? I'm not even... It's like, I'm happy. You know, I'm happy. And not just because of Byleth being in the game. I'm happy because I don't have to eat the fucking beans. I don't have to eat bean boozled. I don't have to eat my fucking words. I could just play this character and smash and wreck someone's day. <laughs> Low expectations and I got exactly what I wanted. Jeez. There you go, 17. Wow, you can tell, he is a fan. Alright, I, admi I admire this guy's dedication, though. I admire it. I was counting in binary. This is zero. Hold this here, and you get one, and then you get two. Then two plus one equals three. So, this would be four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you get 16. Add 1 and you get 17. Awesome, isn't it? You can actually count up to 31 on one hand. And if you use both hands, you can count all the way up to 1023. Hmm. If you've given up counting the knots in the tatami mat, you could always give it a go. Try it out when you're bored. What is Fire Emblem Three Houses? In Japanese, the male version of the main character is called Bereto, and the female version is called Beresu, but in English, they share the same name, Violet. Violet becomes a professor who ends up leading one of three academic houses. Once you've chosen a house, you guide them through their school life, and, well, you end up fighting the other houses. After a certain incident, five years pass, and you meet up with your grown-up students to battle against the other houses in their regions. It's a very sad game in which your former allies become enemies, turn hostile, and try to kill you. To understand the concept of Fire Emblem Three Houses, I played an early version of the game before its release. A lucky bastard. I've done the same thing before, with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, for example because I couldn't wait until launch to experience it or we'd have never made it in time. <laughs> for that title, I borrowed an early version of the game for two days, ran around all the areas, saw the ending, and realized for the first time, hmm, I guess we can't really have Breath of the Wild's Princess Zelda as a fighter. Oh, I wish. I wish. 
I did make it happen, Sakurai. Come on, make because it happen. Multiple endings. It was really hard to get a feel for it. And of course, there weren't any walkthroughs I could reference. The game has multiple routes, and the outcome of each is very different. Your experience will vary depending on the route you choose, and many of the characters you meet will adopt different roles in the story. I'll try. Right, I'm still looking for that comment. About the fighter. I hope you'll understand. Before my demonstration, I should point out that when I did the Terry Bogard showcase video, I mentioned that it was recorded a month in advance. <laughs> but this time, we have to account for the holidays and such, so we're filming two months in advance of this video's release. Right now, it's actually November. Therefore, some of what I'm about to show you might differ a bit from the finished version. As always, I'm using a special in-game camera and such for demonstration purposes. Here I go. Fucking knew it. So, so, this is our new fighter, Violet. Sadly, they're lacking in mobility. It's maybe a bit better than Robin's, but that's about all you can say for them. Throws are not their strong point either. I was say, I don't care about speed. But actually, you could say that they're distance demon. So they're like uh, Simon Belmont. The hero's relic they use changes depending on the direction you input with the stick. Each of the hero's relics is a weapon that appears in Fire Emblem Three Houses. They look like bones, and there's a reason for that. First, let's talk about the weapon Violet uses for upward inputs, the Sword of the Creator. The Sword of the Creator here is Violet's default weapon. They use it for flurry attacks and tilt attacks, such as down tilt attacks, where it takes... Nope, I can't seem to find it anywhere. They also use the sword for dash attacks and other moves. For their up smash attack, they'll whip the sword upward to launch enemies in the air. For their up air attack, they'll wait. Oh god, that attack! Oh god, that is destructive. That is disgusting. Relatively long time. The up special. Okay, yeah, this is a character I might want to pick up. Allowing you to do things like this. Yo. It was pretty terrifying how I knocked him into the air with that attack. And in addition, you can do awful things like this. Oh shit. That said, you'll launch opponents upward until their damage reaches a certain percentage. I like this. I like that. I like that a lot. And you'll need to be careful. It's easier to understand than Terry. That's the, that's the big thing about this. I've already shown this, but you can also use it to latch onto edges. So that's the F special. Now for the sideways inputs. This is Airdrop, the same name as the weapon from Celtic Mythology. First we'll go through the forward and back air attacks. As you can see, they have a long reach. Like so. Mart's air attack keeps opponents in check too, right? If Byleth does the same thing, you'd win out, so you should be able to beat it. Next, the side smash attack. This also has a long range. It'll connect even from here. Well, at least they're fighting in the marketplace this time. Also, if you add an upward tilt... I don't think Jesus would approve of uh, people beating the shit out of each other in his own if house. If you knock an opponent down, the side attack won't hit unless you add a downward tilt to aim for them. Hmm. I like that. By the way, the tip of the lance is more powerful. Oh, oh, he has a tipper. Okay. All right, I see. So it's not suited to close combat. It won't deal much damage, and it won't launch opponents far. And that's why, as a rule, you want to hit with the blade part aimed upward. Or downward, in this case. Next, the side special move. An upward swing with extreme reach? Violet will simply swing the lance like this, but again, it has excellent reach. For example, even when your opponent is at this distance, it'll still hit. Well, that's because of the dash. It, he dashes into it. 
Actually, you can do a smash attack to charge forward a little. Like this. But as you'd expect, it can be easily shielded, so be careful. Use it in midair and you'll carve up a large area. Returning to the side air attacks from earlier, they have great horizontal reach, but they lack verticality. So this complements it well, although you'll be vulnerable when you land. Hmm, okay. Now, for the downward inputs. For these, Byleth will use an axe called Emir. It's named after a weapon that appears in Ugaritic myth. First, the down air attack. It really is strong. You can try for a meteor effect with this attack. Next is the down smash attack. A heavy swing of the axe back and forth. As you can see, it has a great deal of launch power. And for the down special, Violet channels all their energy into a devastating strike. It's a bold move, similar to the Falcon Punch, but here's what makes it different. When readying the move, there's a super armor effect. Which allows you to withstand an attack. Just so you know, if you execute a Falcon Punch at about the same time... Yep. <laughs> oh shit, that is, not, that is scary, man. Punch, that is scary. Effect, you have the advantage. Unless you get grabs. Oh. Another uh, notable aspect is that it lets you pass through platforms. While you're charging up, you can breeze past platforms like this to reach a lower area. Huh. It won't let you jump, but you could use it as a surprise attack. Don't tell also, us what, Don't tell us the surprise. Move. The swing takes a while. So if an opponent runs behind you during the move, you can quickly change direction. Even though it can be hard to land a hit with this move, it can be really effective when used against a group of opponents. Plus, even if you fail oh, finally, to land, Nessa any opponents on the ground nearby will still be launched a little. It's as if the quaking of the ground launches them. By the way, earlier I talked a little bit about the other Fire Emblem characters' moves. I don't recommend using this down special against fighters from the Fire Emblem series, because you'll just get loads of counters. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. A single attack. Counters can this is one of the few this is one of the few Fire Emblem characters that doesn't have a counter. So he doesn't even follow the status quo. Next, we have the neutral moves. The bow you use is called Thelma, which shares its name with the bow from the Knights of the Round Table. It only appears in a few neutral moves. You've got the neutral air attack. This attack is similar to a move of Pitts and other fighters like him. It lets you spin the weapon around. It's also easy to create certain combos with it. And with the neutral special, you'll let loose an arrow. It seems pretty straightforward, right? But there are a few noteworthy aspects to this bow. It's funny, this is the only character in the whole Fire's Pass that come from a game I played before it came to Smash. Like, in fact, I think out of every character in the entire game, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, this is the first character that actually comes from a game I've played. The first one. This is the first. <laughs> You can also change direction while in the Again, I think it, it would have been you even more hype point, if it was Sora. I think it would have been even more hype if it was Crash or Spyro. But I'm not complaining here. This is good stuff right here. Again, it's even better because I've actually played the game. So now I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna participate in the group of people who are pissed off that another Fire Emblem character stole a slot. you need to take care when using this move. Damn. For one, when you've powered up the move to its max, there's no way to cancel out of it. Not even with the shield button. In other words, you're committed to fighting. All the F's in the chat. So you see, <laughs> Daddy Sakurai knows the salt is real. No shit. <laughs> Once you've entered the stand, you won't be able to do anything. 
which means it's quite the risky attack to use against fighters who have a move with a reflector effect. But you could always just aim into the fray, as it is, after all, a long-range move, letting you deal a sudden blow to opponents. So, you need to think carefully when using this move right here. Violet's final smash is called Progenitor God, Ruptured Heaven. In the original game, there's a move called Ruptured Heaven. This is an enhanced version. Oh shit! As you can see, you team up with the mysterious Sophus and launch an attack together. Now, let's talk about the color variations. It's set up so that the default and odd-numbered color variations are male, while the even-numbered ones are female. However, the third, fourth, and fifth colors are, as you can see, reminiscent of the house leaders. Yeah, so we can't, we can't include these three characters, but we can include their costumes. The sixth color is based on Sophus, who you just saw earlier. And the seventh and eighth variations have a different hair color, which is based on based on something that occurs in the course of the original game's story. All right, I am I am definitely gonna go with green hair, male Byleth. That's gonna be my main costume. I like that. I'm glad that that's at least an option. Next, I'll introduce the stage. Oh my god, this the stage one, is good. Oh my god, most of the game. this might be my favorite stage in the bunch. This is how Garrig Moth Monastery is laid out in the original game. From these, we chose to have it cycle through the marketplace, reception hall, bridge, and cathedral, all in one stage. It's the type of stage that rotates through different areas, such as these four. Let me introduce each of the guests that appear in these four areas. The first yeah. area it's even better because they actually have all the I characters, you know, interacting and joining in. That's cool. The guests that appear here are students of the Blue Lion's house. Yeah, this the shows that Sakurai Ingrid really cares Ingrid. about this series, and they really Not care about Smash. Dimitri, Dudu, or Ingrid. Dudu. Their names are a bit difficult yes. to say. They're largely. All right, let's let's look at the let's look at the salt on Twitter while we're at it. For that reason, I guess you could say Dimitri is the future king. Bruh. Yeah, this is such a bruh moment. moment. One eye. He's an unfortunate one, that one. There are vendors on either side. In the original game, these are important booths where you buy all sorts of things. But, uh, here you can break them, you see. If you do break them, the stage will expand to the left and right. I wonder where people will buy their supplies now. And in the background, you can see the gatekeeper. You often pass through this area and fire on three houses, and you end up talking to him a lot. Yeah, he's one of the most likable guards in the entire game. To this mysterious platform, just when it seems like you've come to a stop, you'll come. Oh great! The now there's a giant hole in the, the fucking dining the hall. Nice, nice. And the guests in the reception hall are Edelgard, Dorothea, and Petra of the Black Eagles. Take note, it's not spelled... Dorothea Edelgard. is the best. The absolute the best of the three. Empire. However, if I had to choose, I think in the Black Eagles, I'd choose Bernadetta. Bernadetta is the best. The absolute best. Depending on the path you take, she'll go through some terrible ordeals. You'll notice there are prominent chandeliers above the stage. It's possible to knock them down. Oh my god, no, the professor's vandalizing the chandeliers, no! Some players can't reach the chandeliers on their own. So, it's nice if you can work your way up there by getting lucky and being launched up, or perhaps by using oh, another man. as a stepping stone. Poor Byleth. Byleth can't even get up there. Also, you can break this table. Like so. Oh my god, stop breaking shit! Just like the sign you know you have a limited amount of gold, you can't keep breaking things and buying new ones. One of these days you're just gonna run out of gold and you're not gonna be able to make new weapons because you're too busy buying new tables. <laughs> Fixing all the chandeliers! Creating this long area. It's very wide indeed. 
All right, this is my house right here. The Golden Deer, that's my it's house. The bridge of Elden Stage. The guests are from the Golden Deer. Claude, Hilda, and Lawrence. They belong oh, to the Oh, Lester yeah. Lawrence gets a spot, but where's my... What's her name? Where's Marianne? Where's Marianne? Where's my wife? Where is my bride? Come on. And Claude is the sharpest of the bunch. Incidentally, both Claude and Hilda are the names of characters that appear in Genealogy of the Holy War, the fourth title in the Fire Emblem series. I guess once you've reached the 17th game and are creating 40 characters for each new entry, you're bound to get a bit of name overlap. The naming process must be tough. Hey, it looks like the Pegasus Knight is busy training. And you even include a Pegasus Knight, and yet you can't include Marianne. You can expect plenty of blows to be exchanged at the edges of the screen. You could also say it's a place where the fail knot really shines, and in this sense, I think it suits the Golden Deer perfectly. The last area is the cathedral, only with some platforms you can pass through. The guests appearing in the cathedral are Seda, Flame, and Rhea. Yeah, Seda's Seda, the best. Who appears to have an extremely strong bond with his sister. Flame. Seda's voice actor is also really cool. The of him and Rhea, who you can see fighting during the opening of Fire Emblem Three Houses. All three have character quirks related to their true identities. I feel that Flame might be saying shush at this point, so I'll leave it at that. This is a simple area of the stage. All it has are these platforms. Being the last area, it may be a place where some intense battles will be waged. It'll cycle through each location in about two and a half minutes. Let's see Violet in action. Let's see. Okay, today we'll have a tag team battle in Squad Strike with the DLC team pitted against Fire Emblem protagonists from throughout the ages. That'll give us precisely five players per side. I'm about to say, at this point, you could pretty much populate the entire first Smash Brothers game with Fire Emblem characters. And Hero! They all suck. Get rid of them. We really made a lot, huh? Banjo! By now, I think you know what I'm doing. But basically, yeah, you're ditching all, all you're ditching the riffraff and you're bringing in the character that everyone really wanted. But as expected, it's going to be a pretty tough battle, so I'm using anything I can get my hands on. It's not going to land that easily. Uh oh, this is bad. Panicus. I better keep my distance. I'll use this chance to attack. Got it. That's scary. He's invincible for a moment here. Lots of explosives. Ouch. Perfect shield of that, huh? Good one. If I do this, like this, or like so. No anti here, huh? There, the soccer ball connected. Good, there's mom. You're in a good spot, mom. Ah, I shouldn't have taken that. Gardevoir. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess no one uses projectiles. At this point, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm, like, I'm actually trying to find that comment I made. Where I straight up predicted that it's going like to be Byleth. See, they got it. But I mustn't give up. I can't waste the chance. There's another Smash Ball. Yes, got it. Now, what are you charging up for? There's still more. Wow. Go on, you can take the hammer, but it's mine. Although, I'm scared I might get hit with a counter in this state. I hit him! I was trying to fight using Vilas abilities alone, but what matters is that I won. Good game. 
We tried to play like this, especially in tag team, so I think it's a good idea to try imposing different types of challenges on yourself. The end. Oh, uh, here we go. This is the part everyone's been waiting for. Since it's from the Fire Emblem series, we'll be adding each of the new tracks to all the Fire Emblem stages. There are already a lot of Fire Emblem tracks in the game. Our selection this time has been made taking those existing tracks into consideration. Eleven songs are being added. This includes an arrangement of the main theme in both Japanese and English. I hope you'll enjoy these as well. We're also adding in a new spirit board. It includes the house leaders among some of the other popular characters. Who's the legendary? Yep. So this is legend class. Also, there's a new classic mode rally, a heroic legacy, which is designed to let you enjoy classic Fire Emblem stages from throughout the series history. The final battle is against Master Hand and Crazy Hand. Oh. But you'll find that something pretty amusing happens, so look forward to that. Yeah, don't spoil it here. Now for the Mii Fighter costumes. Please take a look. Oh boy, they're not gonna, they're not gonna get any more hype out of this. Come on. Round five. Let's see what you got. Uh oh. I thought they were putting in Assassin's Creed for a second. What? Assassin's Creed? In Smash? What? <laughs> That'd be cool. And yes, the Rabbids went to Smash before Rayman did. I am not buying that costume. We need more Mega- yeah, we need more Mega Man costumes. We need more of them. We need as many Mega Man costumes as you can carry. What's next? No way! No way! No way! Holy shit! Yo! Let's go! Yeah! Woo! Alright, I'm going to the eShop right now. I'm going to the eShop right fucking now. Oh shit, I am getting that. I am fucking buying that. I was not expecting that. Shit. Ha! Where is it? Where is it? Smash Brothers. Available January 28th. Hi. This time, we're releasing Bastards. Cuphead costumes. And for those of you who purchased the Cuphead costume, an additional song will be added. Yo! Let's go! Fury, and it's the theme that fades when Let's fucking go! I hope you enjoy these as well. You finally gave me something I wanted! After Thank you! you! I recommend using the sharing feature. You fucking gave me something I wanted! Costume that's wearing immediately after you download it. And now, onto the amiibo. The color palette. Nice, co nice collection there. Dark Samus and Richter are planned for release on Friday, January 17th. And now, with the addition of Violet, the fighter's pass is finally complete. The lineup was Joker, Hero, Banjo and Kazooie, Terry Bogard, and Violet. I am not disappointed. I'm actually pretty happy with that. fighters, only five have been added. But I must say, this game has always been an exceptional experience. And since the roster was already so large to begin with, right from the start, we intended to make the most out of the new gameplay mechanics and so on. There really were a lot of new mechanics weren't there. 
When we add a new fighter, we don't simply make their attacks or their movements a little different. Instead, we try to offer you a whole new style of play. As I stated, we'll continue to release more DLC fighters down the line. I had thought that one or two might suffice, but, well, have a look. Oh boy. What are you gonna do, mate? Even more fighters in development? How many? Oh shit! Six? Looks like there will be one more fighter than last time. <laughs> For this reason, we will be releasing the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass Volume 2. It will be available for pre-purchase on the day chum, so please keep an eye out. That's a pre-order, but day one made to move ahead with development. Of course, like last time, the contents will remain unknown for now, and I'm personally very sorry that we have to release Fighters Pass Volume 2 when the details have yet to be revealed. Look, it's okay. It is fine. Like last time, I'd be very grateful if Only pre-purchase if you're okay with that. I am perfectly fine with that. Furthermore, the new additions have already been decided. Even if I receive many requests regarding potential candidates on Twitter, I'm afraid it would be very hard to consider them. <laughs> I'll give you a million dollars. But I still hope you'll look I'll give you a million dollars. I will buy you a condo. Look, I, I, I will buy you a condo in Miami Beach. Okay, I'll do anything for Spyro. <laughs> It's a Mii Fighter costume for Mii Sword Fighter, Ooh, the ancient okay. soldier gear from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This will not be for sale individually, so it can only be acquired as part of Fighter's Pass Volume 2. It looks like I'm having that. I'm getting that. I won't use it, but I'll have it. Oh no. It's been reported that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the highest selling fighting game in the world. Personally, I don't know if it counts as simply a fighting game, but I guess it's seen as a fighting game around the world. Is it? I say it is. Street Fighter 2 was in the lead for a while, but now Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has surpassed it in total sales. However, I'm not sure if this is accurate. There were five versions of Street Fighter 2, or six to seven if you really want to get into the weeds. Plus, there's the arcade versions and the 25 ports to other systems, so I don't know if that's been accounted for. Also, I don't know if that really qualifies as one game. It's up for discussion. So, who knows? But when it comes to a single piece of software, it seems like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is number one. Although, I still don't know if it can really be called just a fighting game. This I game is like fucking life, and you game. know it. Some sort of celebration of game yeah. or something else entirely. Oh man, it is. It also, really is. I feel a deep attachment to the five DLC oh, fighters. <laughs> the first fighters pass just wrapped up, but it was decided that there will be more DLC, which means no breaks for me. Dude, I plan to keep working hard. Take so a break. Okay. I feel bad asking you for new shit, man. You are such a dedicated dude. Okay. I may say a lot of shit, but man, that is cool. All right. I really wasn't expecting that. Oh man, I was not expecting. I was not expecting the Cuphead DLC. I was fully, fully expecting Byleth. All right, that was pretty much something I predicted well before the game even came out. Like before the game came out, when I heard that the game was going to have DLC, immediately the first thing, the very first thing that I thought was, "All right, when's the Three Houses character coming?" That's pretty much the first thing that came to my head. I pretty much made predictions all over my Discord, all over my Twitter, all over my YouTube channel. And I just straight up said, buy left is coming to Smash. It's going to happen. It's not just a matter of, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Because by the time Corin came to Smash Brothers on Wii U, 
It's it's like I just knew. The new Fire Emblem game is always going to have a character in Smash Brothers. So if we get another Fire Emblem game on the Switch throughout the next six months, then we're probably going to get another Fire Emblem character to show up in the next DLC package. So, yeah. I fucking called it. I told you. I told every last one of you that this was going to happen and we fucking got it. And the thing is, I'd, I'd probably be mad. I'd be pissed if it wasn't for the fact that I played through the game and actually liked it. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to make up excuses. I'm not going to say that it's another Fire Emblem character so it immediately doesn't work. No. I like this. I'm happy with this. I will take it. I'm not, I don't necessarily want Byleth as a playable character. I just didn't want to eat Bean Boozled Beans. Because part of my bet was, if Byleth didn't show up as DLC, that I would buy a whole box of Bean Boozled Beans and just down the whole entire thing. However, even so, with six new characters on the horizon, I wouldn't have to worry about that just yet. In fact, I'd be hoping and praying that the Bean Boozled Company dies out before I could ever um, eat my own words, so to say. But uh, let's look at let's look at the comments. So far, we don't really have any. We have Kesher on Twitch saying it will either be one of these. Mark my words: Dante, Sora, or Hans. Well, <laughs> hate to say, I hate to disappoint you, but we got Cuphead, which I wanted. All right, I wanted Cuphead in Smash Brothers really badly that's like this was something that i wanted but just knew for a fact it would not come to smash all right i don't give a shit that it's a me fighter costume i don't care it's a me fighter costume all right for me cuphead and smash it could be a me fighter costume for all i care i don't mind it's cuphead it's a cuphead costume and i love it and I have to wait till January 28th to get it. I'm I'm bummed about that. But at the same time, you know, in about 12 days, we're going to get a new character. We're going to get new costumes. A costume I'm actually going to have to buy. Which, the last me costume I got was the Sans one. And, yeah, I'm not an Undertale fan. But, of course, I'm going to buy the Cuphead. I'm going to buy the Undertale costume for the memes. Holy shit. <laughs> Man, that is epic. That was cool. That was actually really cool. So, seriously, Nintendo, I expected nothing, and you fucking blew my expectations out of the water. You fucking blew them away. Thank God. Alright, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sakurai. Thank you, Nintendo. Also, fuck you, Sakurai, because you put Ness in Super Smash Brothers. But at the same time, <laughs> I retract my fuck you because of the Cuphead costume. You are awesome. <laughs>